Thank you for that, musicians. And good morning, everybody. Welcome to Shoal Even Baptist Church. It's good to have you join with us this morning. We're going to sing song number one in the Majesty Hymnal. It's Rejoice, the Lord is King. But right before we do that, we'll open in prayer at this time. Dear Lord, thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for this opportunity that you give us once again, Lord, to, to sing, to worship you, to praise you. Lord, we pray that you help our hearts to be prepared for the preaching and teaching of your word. Lord, help us to, to hear wondrous things uh, out of thy law. Lord, help us to, to understand more of your will for our lives and help us to be obedient to it. We pray that you'd be with Pastor Shalabar as he preaches and be with us as we listen. We pray that your kingdom would be advanced and that you'd be uplifted and glorified. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. the Lord is King. All right, let's make a couple of announcements, and then uh, we'll go ahead and go over. It's a new memory verse. We're going to start it just a little bit early. You probably already got it in the mail. If you haven't, uh, you can open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 11. We'll do verses 28 through 30, but just a couple of announcements first. Remember that uh, every morning, every Sunday morning, 10 a.m. here, we've got our our um, church worship service and the younger primary class, Sunday school class, 10 a.m. on Sundays. Then from eight o'clock on Sundays uh, on YouTube, we've got our church worship service. And uh, we also have the primary or junior Sunday school on YouTube at that time as well. Uh, on site here, Wednesdays at 7 p.m., we have our prayer and Bible study time. And on Friday, 4.30. We've got the, the kids club meeting 4.30 to 5.30. Then we clean up for a little bit. And from about 6 o'clock to a bit after 7, we have our teens meeting. We've been having some good groups there and some good times. All right, let's see then. 14 March, we've got the baptism and a light lunch right here. We'll leave right after the church service and have a baptismal service. Then we'll come back here for a light lunch. That's Sunday, the 14th of March. Also, if you want piano lessons, please see Mrs. Hall. Several have responded to that, and we're excited about that. And lastly, we have a missions emphasis in March. 
Each Sunday there'll be a different speaker, uh, Pastor Shalabert, myself, and Pastor Rodney Skelton from Lighthouse Bible Baptist Church in Oladella. All right, let's go ahead and go over Matthew 11, and we'll do verses 28 through 30. We'll do it twice uh, as we normally do. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. Let's do that again. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and pray then for uh, the offerings that have been coming in. And uh, please continue to do so. We're thankful for that. Uh, you can give online or you can come and put it in the box uh, in the foyer. But let's, uh, let's thank the Lord at this time. Dear Lord, thank you for the giving that uh, is taking place. Lord, thank you for enabling us to be able to, to give to you, Lord. Thank you for, for, for giving to us in the first place and for providing and Lord, we do pray for each person who gives uh, tithes and gives offerings and, and also a faith promise, Lord, for, for missions giving, Lord, especially as we have a missions emphasis coming up and we're going to uh, speak about faith promise and, and collect a faith promise again, Lord. I just pray that you'd continue to bless, Lord. Help us to be able to, to give back and support uh, even more uh, than we have been. But Lord, you've enabled us to take care of uh, our needs and our homes and the needs here at church and uh, also to be able to support uh, missions, Lord. And we thank you for that. We pray that you'd bless uh, those who are giving. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, 162, Fairest Lord Jesus.
Amen. Fairest Lord Jesus. The songwriter got it right. There are lots of fair things in the world, but uh, Jesus tops them all. Amen. All right. Uh, looking forward to hearing Pastor Shella Bear preach again for us. Uh, so please come at this time if you would. Well, thank you, Pastor Paul, and thank you for uh, singing at home. I hope you were. A great hymn, and uh, great to be able to sing at home. Hopefully, in the very near future, we'll be able to sing again in church. Amen. All goes well. And so uh, we're really looking forward to that, Amen. as you know. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, do turn in your Bibles to John chapter 15. We're going to continue in John chapter 15 just for a little bit. And uh, we will uh, see what uh, the Bible has for us today from John chapter 15, in particular verses 13 through 15. Um, Pastor Hall mentioned that we're uh, having some baptisms uh, coming up in a week or two, two weeks, 14th of March. And so um, looking forward to that too. That'll be sort of in the middle of uh, uh, our Missions Emphasis Month, but uh, that's okay. Um, we are told to go forth and to preach and to teach and to baptise. And so uh, that's one of the things that we need to do. So I'm looking forward to that. We have a few people who are going to be baptised. So uh, if you haven't been to church for a while, uh, do come along for that uh, particular day and share in that. And I think we're having a little white lunch afterwards, so it should be great. Looking forward to all of those things. Right, well, I want to talk to you this morning about the necessity of friends. Now, I've spoken to you previously over the last few weeks about uh, the necessity of pruning talked about that and the necessity of abiding in Christ now I want to talk to you about the necessity of friends so let's have a read here in John chapter 15 and in verse 13 through 15 I'll begin in verse 13 Jesus says greater love hath no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we do want to praise you. Thank you today. As we uh, meet together, uh, uh, some in church, some in other places, and and for those who are watching on, are uh, most likely in their homes, but Lord, we pray you bless them through the preaching of your word this morning. And Lord God, we particularly ask if there are any who do not know Jesus as their Lord and Saviour, uh, that today would be the day of their salvation. Bless us, Lord, as we look through your word, and we'll thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Of course, you probably have a pretty good idea of what a friend is. Friends are uh, kind of come and go a little bit in our life, uh, but we, we do have friends, and some friends uh, last almost a lifetime. But uh, having an idea of friends is a good thing. We would expect you to do that. Uh, we all have a friend. Well, I hope that you all do have a friend. Because to live without a friend is a bit of a lonely existence. Unfortunately for us, sometimes people who we thought were our friends turn out not to be. Then at other times, we can be pleasantly surprised when uh, somebody we weren't really sure was a friend turns out uh, to be uh, a friend indeed, and a friend in need. Friendship's a particular need of mankind. Uh, uh, the need of friends uh, is, an, is a necessary part of our existence. To have a true friend in life is a blessing. And yet there are times when we fail to appreciate our dearest friends. If we look to the Bible, we find that uh, after God made Adam out of the dust of the earth and 
breathed life into him, he realized that he would need some companionship. And in the Genesis account, we find that God created all of the animals and then he brought them uh, before uh, Adam and uh, Adam named all of the animals. But none of them was found to be a helpmate, a suitable friend for Adam. There was no particularly suitable companion, no friend for him. And the Lord God said, it's not good that man should be alone. I'll make him and help me for him. You can read that in the second chapter of Genesis in verse 18. And a little while on from there, we read, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And so it was that man's first friend was a woman. Coincidentally, a woman's first friend was a man. And in the scheme of things, I'm quite sure that that's significant and it's worth remembering. As I mentioned, we all have a friend and if we don't, we sure do need one. We want to have a friend. We need a friend, someone close to us that can be there when we need them. We need a friend. It just seems to be a part of human nature. Some of us have pets and uh, so on as friends, but there's nothing quite the same as a human friend. So I wanted to share with you this necessity of a friend. So what about a definition? I wanted to know what a friend was so that I could check up and see if I had a friend. I consulted my dictionary and my dictionary stated this, a friend is a person we know and with whom we have a bond of mutual affection and kind regard. A friend is an intimate and trustworthy companion. Now, that sounded pretty good to me and I had a quick check and I'm pretty sure that I have at least one of those. And I looked a little further and my dictionary reminded me that friendship is a mutual regard cherished by kindred minds. The state or fact of being a friend, which reminded me of one of Solomon's wise proverbs, his wise sayings. And so in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24, we find this, a man that hath friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. So I looked a little further in my dictionary and I discovered that one can be friendly without being a friend. My dictionary said that one can be a friend towards those who are not your friends and that being friendly may signify a little more than not being hostile. It's all getting a bit tricky, isn't it? A little bit involved. Uh, I want some friends, but how do I tell who's just being friendly and who my true friends are? And how can I be a friend? So let's have a look. I know that God intends people to have friends and to be friends and that the Bible word for friends uh, appears over a hundred times in the scriptures. So it must be important. And elsewhere, I also read that there was a, a, a Dr. Siegel who uh, worked with uh, prisoners of war and people like that. And he said that even the most powerful figures in the world need contact with others 
so that uh, who they can trust as friends when facing a crisis. Isn't that true? He went on to say that in a study of over 2,000 people who had suffered trauma, including physical abuse, survivors were healthier if they managed to confide in someone they called a friend. True friends are important. Solomon said, a friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Here, this verse of scripture brings together a friend who is not necessarily a member of the family and one who is a member of the family and who acts as a friend. A friend loveth at all times and a brother is born for adversity. You know, some people say uh, a blood is thicker than water. Well, that's what that brotherly kind of love speaks about, isn't it? But friends also can be people who will stick with you through thick and thin. Sometimes there are non-family friends who we value very highly and have proved themselves to be true friends over the years and through difficulties. But when a family member is a true friend, there's something special about that, something particularly Decent, I suppose, when a friend who's a member of the family can help in times of trouble. We don't often think of brothers and sisters or mothers and fathers or cousins or whatever it is as being friends. We just think of them as family. But family can be friends. I've noticed how children make friends very easily, well, most of the time, and how important it is to them to have a friend. But I've also noticed that these friendships kind of come and go a bit. In the early uh, childhood years, they're, uh, they're a bit immature and, and need time to develop and be proven. And there's a role there for mum and dad to guide their children into friendships that add value to them, to guide them with wisdom so as the uh, friendships that uh, children make will enhance their righteousness and not distract from it. And wisdom does play its part here. How many of us have suffered at the hands of a so-called friend? Someone who said, if you don't give me what I want, I won't be your friend anymore. Not really a friend in the first place. I wonder how many tears have been shed because of one who we thought was a friend and we thought we could depend upon turned out to be significantly less than that. Friends are important. There's a necessity of friendship in the life of every human. I recall the story of a young girl who living in a small country town who was quite a good athlete. Her and another girl were vying for a champion girl at the athletics carnival at the school that they attended. And a few days before the school sports day uh, began, her father could see that uh, she was troubled about something. And when asked, she said, Dad, I don't want to run in this race. And that seemed strange because she was good and she loved sport and she had a chance of winning she said daddy i don't want to run because if i run and win the other girls won't let me be their friend and so her father with uh, some degree of wisdom said to her it's okay you run and i'll be your friend she ran and Dad cheered her on. And today, they're still friends. Friends are just so important in life. And we need faithful friends. We all need true friends. And we need faithful friends. Being a faithful friend is not always easy, though. If you want to have faithful friends, you will need to be 
a faithful friend. You share days together, you share ideas, you share each other's joys, uh, each other's disappointments. But what happens one day when this good friend of yours has made a decision that if carried through is going to bring them more trouble than good? And there you are looking in, so to speak, from the outside in and and seeing what might happen. And all you can see is the potential of disaster to unfold. What do you do? What should you do? When that friend of yours is headed for trouble. The wise King Solomon said, faithful are the wounds of a friend but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. The sweet words of one who's not concerned for your best, but is only wanting an end that suits themselves is deceitful. The careless words of one who only looks for the immediate and flat, flattering words of one who only looks for appearance, it's not worth anything. These things are no better than lies. They are kisses of deceit which lead us to make poor decisions in order to please or advance their selfish desires without consideration for our well-being. This is not the action of a friend. If you're a faithful friend, a time will surely come sometime in your life when you are going to have to risk that friendship for the sake of your friend and offer good advice, which just might not be too easy to do at the time. Sometimes some people are saying, yes, go ahead and do this and whatever. And all you can see is disaster and you need to counsel your friend. Sometimes we're fearful, even with good friends, to say to them that that they most need to know but don't want to hear. Parents can be in that situation too. Parents can become as enemies if they give um, an unmeasured, uh, de- give in to unmeasured demands of their children. When they don't want to chance a tirade of, uh, you know, expressions and perhaps even expletives of dislike for a short time, can bring on a long time of discomfort for all. There may well come a time when a faithful friend will have to do as Paul once advised the Ephesians, to speak the truth in love. Simply because we don't want the best for our friend. Sorry, simply because we do want the best for our friend. We need to act in love. Amen. That's love. That's agape love. That's wanting what's best for the object of your love. We're not always right, of course. And sometimes we need to accept that. But surely we ought to give our friends fair warning if we can. Helping a friend through a tough spot by showing some true character yourself might bring some discomfort in the short term. But... Blessings in the long run. Be sure when all is done, faithful are the wounds of a friend. Sounds strange, doesn't it? But sometimes it's needed. In the late 1970s, I was working for an insurance company and uh, I attended a two-day state conference put on by the Insurance Agents Association. You know, that's a long time ago. And I couldn't tell you really what happened at that conference, except for one thing. The speaker's name was J.R. Pegues. He was an exceptionally successful man from the South of the USA and he was the guest speaker. Honestly, 
I don't remember what he said. He probably talked about you know, how to be successful in business and those kind of things. But what I do remember is when he came out onto the speaker's platform for the applause of several hundred, what he said quickly quietened the crowd. He began by saying this, he said, I love my job. I love my children and more than that, I love my wife. She's the best friend in the world to me. But as much as I love my work, my family and my wife, there's one I love more. I love my Lord. I love the Lord Jesus Christ because he loved me and died to save me from his sins. Amen. He loves me and he is my very best friend. Well, you could have heard a pin drop. It was silence. When he said, Jesus is my very best friend, whew, it was different. I'd never heard that before. I was just beginning my Christian walk, discovering about my faith. And I didn't understand the depth and the breadth of what he had said. But I remember thinking, that's pretty amazing. And somehow through the years, I remembered it. When it comes to friendship, Jesus shows us the way. There is no greater example than can be set in all the pages of all of history's great books than Jesus Christ. Jesus said, Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I've called your friend, called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. The greatest friendship you can have is that friendship that you develop with Jesus Christ. There's much said in the scripture about Christ and about friendship, but three things I'd just like to share with you quickly. Great love is demonstrated by the willingness of one friend to give his life for another. God's word says this, in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 25, husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Here's an example set by Jesus that is to flow on to everyday life. A true friend will give up the things that they most cherish for the sake of the one they love. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Oh, that doesn't mean you have to go and stand in front of a bullet necessarily, though you may. But it does mean sometimes that we have to give up those things that we thought were important to us for the sake of somebody we love. Secondly, friends obey. What friend is it who, uh, when asked to do something that uh, is uh, a needed and helpful thing for their friend, would do the opposite to that? That's not what friends do. There's a great degree of trust, reliability and reliance between friends, which is seen in obedience. Now, sometimes uh, a friend might ask you to do something and you say yes. Would you then go and do exactly the opposite? No. You would probably be inconvenienced even to some extent so as to do that thing that your friend had asked you to do and you said you would do. If your friend asked you to pick you up from outside of the railway station, 
at noon, you'd hardly go there at midnight and expect them to be there. There is that degree of obedience between friends, that reliability. Another thing about friends is that friends share important truths. The Greek word from which our English word friends is translated is that word philos, which has the meaning of a dear friend, a friend who cherishes kind regard for another person, a friend who is an intimate and trustworthy companion. That's what that word is talking about. And this kind of friend will tell you the truth when others will only tell you what they think you want to hear. And this kind of friend will give up what's dear to them in order for you to have something that's important for you. Jesus, the best friend you could ever have, was heard to say, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus Christ gave his life for you. His life. He became the sacrifice that paid the penalty for your sin. Why? Because it made him look good? That's not the act of a friend. Because uh, if he did so, uh, people would take notice and, and write things down about him and he'd be a hero forever? No. He did it because he loved you. There's no other reason. He loved you. In return, if you want Jesus as a friend, will you return that love? Will you listen to his commands? Will you do the things that he asks you to do? If you're a friend, you will. Isn't it interesting when old friends meet again after a long absence, their, their meeting is really something to look forward to. Last year, the end of last year, I was able to go back to Western Australia and, and I made an appointment to meet with two old friends that I hadn't seen for a long time. One of them was a school friend. We were school friends together uh, when we first went to school about when we were about 12 years old I guess and uh, from that time on we've been friends I don't see this guy very often but we're still friends he is now a good Christian man his family have all grown up and so on but we met together for a cup of coffee and we had a great time just sitting and chatting and talking and remembering things being friends Amen and the lady in the coffee shop came up to see if we needed anything else and uh, we said, no, 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 it's okay. Uh, and look, we're about done, we'll get out of your way. And she said, no, no, it's okay. You, I can see you're old friends. You can stay as long as you like. Isn't it good? That kind of warm embrace, that hearty handshake that you have with good friends. What a joy to see a friend again after a long time apart. But you know, there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. There is a friend who someday we will see in reality, a friend that we don't see now except by faith. And that's Jesus Christ. There's a friend that's closer than a brother, a friend who can be relied upon in any time of need, a friend who gave his life for you. And that friend is Jesus Christ. So I want to ask you this morning, will you reach out your hand? Will you reach out your heart? And will you greet him? Will you receive him as your very best friend? But more than that, Will you trust him as your saviour? Reach out your hand. Put your hand into his hand. 
and call him a friend because Jesus Christ loved you. Died on the cross of Calvary and paid the penalty of your sin just because he loved you. Will you do that? Will you do that now? Will you just reach out your heart, reach out your hand and trust the Lord Jesus Christ? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you now, Lord. We thank you for friends, the friends that we have on earth, those who stand by us in terrible times of need. But especially, Lord, we thank you for your dear son, Jesus Christ. We thank you that he is a friend who sticks closer than a brother, a friend in all times of need. Thank you, Lord, for sending his son. And we'll praise him, praise you now. In his precious name, amen. Pastor Hall, will you come and lead us in a closing hymn? Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you for that message. Isn't Jesus the best friend? But we need to be reliable. We need to stick close. We need to speak the truth in love. We need to be giving. And uh, I work hard at that, and I fail sometimes. But uh, Jesus never fails at that. Amen. Let's sing 161. 161 uh, in the Majesty Hymn. Which, what a friend we have in Jesus. How great uh, a friend we have in Jesus. Uh, thank you for the preaching and teaching, Pastor Shalabair. Thank you for joining uh, us all along here, uh, those who are in the audience there. Let's, uh, let's close in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for the reminder today of uh, the necessity of friends, how we need friends, how we ought to cherish and love and appreciate our friends. Lord, we ought to seek out good friends. But Lord, then there's the other side of that coin. We need to be good friends. 
We need to care. We need to speak the truth in love. We need to be reliable, dependable. Lord, we need to be giving and sacrificial. Lord, we're so thankful that you are the greatest example in all things. Lord, uh, in this uh, uh, idea of friendship, thank you for your example. Help us to, to follow it and seek to be like you. Thank you for being our great friend. Lord, for anyone here who's not saved, we pray that they would realize and, and accept that you died on the cross in their place for them because you love them that you were buried uh, as their substitute, that you rose again, conquering uh, death and paying uh, uh, for their sin and their penalty in hell. And if they would just turn to you in faith and trust uh, the, the work of the gospel that you performed, uh, Lord, they could be saved. And, and that's the greatest that uh, any, any friend could ever do for anyone. And we thank you for that. But we pray that you'd help us uh, to be uh, like that in our friendships. Lord, thank you uh, for, for being our great friend. Help us uh, to be a, a friend to others. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm.